free flight is about freedom. It is mostly unregulated. But this does not mean you're free to do anything, anywhere. There are laws that apply to all aircraft, the people you must protect, and the land you fly from. You might not agree with the laws, but if you're going to learn to fly, you need to know about them. The big one is the Civil Aviation Authority and the commercial aircraft which use restricted airspace. Go to an airspace map and see what's in your area, or use the XE Track app, which will load it for you. There's also military airspace, which is best to avoid unless you like the idea of being target practice. We can fly paragliders in all the uncontrolled airspace, along with private aircraft following whatever rules they have to follow, which in our case as paragliders is very little. Clear of cloud during the day and not low over towns and other hazards, except while taking off, soaring or landing which covers you close to most terrain. You are unpowered and silent, so cannot cause a disturbance. Most people cannot prevent you from overflying their property because they are landowners, not sky owners. But if you find a nice place to fly, you'll probably want to fly it regularly and share the joy with your pilot friends. So you need some agreement with landowners or national parks officials to establish a launch site and safe landing field. This can often bring us around to insurance. In many places, when you fly near other people or property on the ground, there's a tiny risk of you losing control and crashing. In a fraction of these cases, you could cause some very expensive damage. So many pilots have some kind of third party insurance cover. This usually comes with a paragliding license. If you choose to fly without it, you put your assets or family at risk of a claim for the damages you might cause. The landowner might charge you or your club something small to allow you to operate a flying site on their land. But it's unlikely to cover any legal claim visitors could make against the landowner. In some countries, there's no legal risk here. In others, the landowner has a legal duty of care towards users of their land. If you're flying from open land like many mountain regions or coastlines, there's no problem. But if you duck under this red tape on a popular flying site that was negotiated on private land on the basis of this landowner liability cover, you will upset the local pilots. This sort of person usually tends to rock up and fly a site without complete training and without knowledge of the site rules. They tend to cause accidents and get sites closed down. Now sites are precious. They are our gateways to the sky. Once a site is lost, it seldom opens again. This is where a national association and licenses come in. In Paragliding, the Beginner's Guide, you can see how the national systems compare and learn much more about their value to you. This is a highly recommended book for you to study. The link is up there or down below, depending on your device. For instance, in the UK, the BHPA acts as a collective voice when resisting further restrictions on our freedoms. It provides a rating scheme so you can be sure of a minimum standard of training and pilot behavior. It investigates accidents and issues advice. Because of the safety record and low claims history, it can negotiate group insurance, which is much cheaper for everyone. And this gives us access to many more flying sites. It's run mostly by volunteers and does a massive amount of work for free flight. Your national association is probably run on a similar basis. Getting training at a registered school means you avoid making the mistakes other self-learners made. The safe learning path is laid out before you. Hi, I'm Jess, and this is Fly Sussing. 
Here at Fly Sussex, students are being introduced to paragliding on their first day. You don't need any prior experience or special skills to do what they are doing here. You can do this on day one. It's invaluable to have an expert instructor at your side to guide you through the practical phase of learning to fly. The school will provide a safe, controlled environment so you can concentrate on one thing at a time instead of being overwhelmed by complexity. They provide a forgiving training wing, a gently sloped training site with the right kind of weather. And you absorb a lot by watching the others and listening to the instructors correcting their mistakes. Hi, I'm Aston and I'm learning to fly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlie and I'm learning to fly. The paraglider is an incredible aircraft that is very simple to operate. Until it isn't. That's where the school you choose makes a big difference, showing you the shortcuts to get back into control before you do something that hurts you. Yeah, I'm fine, man. I'm still pumping. <laughs> really, really good. Yeah, yeah awesome. really, really good fun. Yeah. <laughs> if you're lucky, your school operates tandem gliders too, so you can get airborne and learn additional skills. Or just try it out to see if this is really your thing. Nice one! Thank you. That was lovely, eh? <laughs> Appreciate that. Beautiful. How was that? Yeah, that was magnificent. Yeah. You going again? <laughs> yeah, we'll see what the wind's like. We'll go Learning up. overseas we'll is an attractive offer with intensive training and good weather. But be sure that the training is relevant to the environment you will fly in. For instance, on returning to the UK, many pilots find themselves unprepared for soaring through traffic in strong wind over small sites where top landing and slope landing are required skills. Make sure your national association recognizes the training you receive or has a simple conversion pathway for you to gain your license. At the end of the day, it's about you getting easy access to the best flying sites so you can work less, fly more, as you'll learn to do at Fly Sussex or my other partner schools like Flight Park, Oase, Eagle, and Birdman. How you get there is up to you. You can choose to be a rogue, flying solo from the wild places, beyond the reach of clubs, licenses, and insurance policies. Or you can join the community, follow the established rules that are put in place for your safety, contribute to the collective insurance pot, join competitions and learn from shared knowledge. Flying clubs are extremely welcoming to new pilots who want to follow the rules. Sometimes the insurance for paragliding is not even available, but in most places around the world, the system was created by pilots just like you to protect your access to free flight. If you're new on the scene, it's much more fun to follow the rules and make friends. It's far more important that you know how to fly well so you avoid the accident in the first place. Whichever path you choose, your development as a pilot can be massively boosted by my online training system. I teach technique and applied flight theory so you can progress fast from absolute beginner to a very high level. In my flight level course, you will get detailed training in the fundamentals of free flight. There's nothing like it available online. I've condensed a lifetime of learning into my syllabus. It complements your flight school training by boosting key skills, correcting bad habits, and explaining everything you need to know. You might also be interested in my academy, 
where you can dive into a broader catalogue of lessons and get your questions answered on a continued basis. Members even get money back on training and gear. Learning to fly is amazing. Let's get you started.